Hey, yo, boy, it's your boy CJ Mellow with another episode of the Mellow Podcast. So I know it's been a couple weeks that I dropped an episode, you know. I want to take a little break from a little bit of the holiday stuff, you know. You all know holidays can be a little bit uh, exhausting, so to speak. So I want to take a couple, at least two weeks off. I feel like I did. Or maybe a week off. I don't remember anymore. But yeah, we're going to come back with a new episode. I just want to give a shout out to everybody that's been liking the podcast, listening to the podcast. Uh, I always say I'm going to try to do better. And I truly do believe that. But I think this year, depending, if not maybe by June, we'll see how the podcast holds up. I might continue, might not continue. It really all depends. Um, But yeah, we we do another Marvel's uh, Teams on Mass episode. I feel this would be a good one. Probably something that nobody knows about. It's something that's kind of current to the TV. uh, I want to say mainstream, but I can't remember the word I'm trying to say. I want to say mainstream. At the current moment on that just came out on Disney Plus, which is Echo. Have not seen it yet. Plan to. All five episodes already dropped. I hear it's a phenomenal show. I hear there's a extra scene, so I'm ready to see that when I can. Um, but yeah, y'all know what it is. Y'all ready to go? Because I'm ready to go. Here we go. Quick note before we start this episode. The name Marvel Knights is, is only used for identification purposes by readers. The team and all other characters in the Marvel Universe never referred to this team by that name or any other. This team has been referred to as Daredevil's unnamed superhero team within the Marvel Universe itself. For the sake of this article, the team will be referred to as the Marvel Knights. So as you didn't realize already, we'll, we'll be talking about the Marvelites here on this episode of the Marvel Teams Unmasked Marvel Knights. I feel like I'm saying it weirdly when I say it fast. So... Basically, the Marvelites is a, a loose knit alliance of urban vigilantes, first assembled to investigate a mysterious massacre of Red Mafia members in Brooklyn. Allied, allied, that sounds wrong. Allied by his ex partner, the Black Widow, and young hero Dagger, Daredevil soon discovered that the Asgardian rock troll Ulick had caused the massacre in search of a mystical Ragnarhorn. Aided by Punisher and Chang Chi, the Marvel Knights preoccupied the troll and his minions long enough for the Marvel Knights to preoccupy the troll and his minions long enough for Daredevil to retrieve the Ragnarhorn and deliver it to Ulick, thus averting further incident. Afterwards, the Black Widow, Dagger, Daredevil, and Chang Chi decided to work together to bring the Punisher to justice, disapproving of his lethal methods. Wealthy adventurer, Moon Knight, offered to join and finance their new group, and Daredevil reluctantly accepted. Moon Knight even provided the team, in quotes, with a headquarters, although Daredevil thought a central base of operations was a bad idea. By this time, Dagger's then missing partner, Cloak, who was being corrupted by the demonic nightmare, had sucked the Punisher into his dimension of darkness, which had been semi-merged with a fraction of Nightmare's realm. Who had done this as a part of misguided quests consumed all lawbreakers. After Cloak consumed Daredevil, Black Widow and Moon Knight, Dagger teamed with Doctor Strange to purge Cloak's corrupting darkness and rescue her teammates. Tensions between Daredevil and Moon Knight escalated once Moon Knight hired Luke Cage as a full-time member without consulting consulting the rest of the team. Meanwhile, Zoran, the weapons master, and Fu Manchu conspired to destroy the group. While Black Widow and Dagger dealt with S.H.I.E.L.D., life model decoys programmed to eliminate the Black Widow, whom they considered a security threat, the rest of the team battled Zoran and warriors from Bur- Burma's decoy assassin cult sent by Fu Manchu. Moon Knight's headquarters was destroyed and the team decided to disband. Later, Daredevil, Black Widow, Punisher teamed with Sergeant Helen Kim, a double agent working for S.H.I.E.L.D. and the North Korean police force, to take down the Brothers Grace, two European multi-billionaires with a penchant for plastic surgery who attempted to take over the New York underworld after Kingpin was taken down by Sammy Silk. Although they were successful in thwarting the Brothers' grace, it remains to be seen whether the Marvel Knights team will ever join forces again. So, quick thing. I am, I'm reading this off Marvel.com, so shout out to Marvel.com. It also says, take note, true believer. This crowdsourced content has not been yet verified by accuracy or for accuracy by their intruded, uh editors. Hash Marvel editorial staff. So, some of these things might not be in order of the way they seem to be. But, you know, it's all good. It's all good. What was I doing? I'm going to read something else. So, And then this next part I'm going to read 
which is just a quick synopsis of who they are and who's like just breaking down the team and stuff like that a little bit more, just a little bit more. Uh, the Marvel Knights official superhero team that operates within the Marvel Comics universe. Unlike traditional superhero teams, like the Avengers or the X-Men, the Marvel Knights brand is more of an imprint or label under which certain comics are published. The Marvel Knights imprint was established to showcase darker, street-level, and more mature storytelling, often featuring characters who dealt with grittier themes and faced more realistic urban challenges. Now, since Echo is out, that's more of a street kind of show. You know, like if you remember Daredevil, uh, Iron Fist, you know, Iron Fist kind of went off street level. Um, Jessica Jones and uh, The Punisher and what's the Luke Cage show on, that were all on Netflix a couple, almost like six, seven years ago, I want to say. All those shows were like, those are all street level heroes. Or Punisher, I don't know what you want to really call him. He's not a villain, but he's also not a hero. Um, but yeah, like I said, those are all street level style heroes. So I'm assuming since Echo's out now, I hear they want to do like a street level style Avengers show at some point. So I, that'd be really cool to see. And I, in a way, this is what they were doing. You no, know, they're called the Defenders technically, but the Marvel Knights, we kind of already got them set up. But again, I haven't seen Echo yet, so we're going to have to wait and see. But let me continue. Uh, here's a breakdown of the Marvel Knights concept and some key characters associated with it. Formation and purpose. Well, Marvel Knights was launched in the late 90, 1990s as an imprint to revitalize and modernize certain Marvel characters. The goal was to attract a more mature audience and experiment with storytelling styles that were distinct for traditional superhero fare. Street-level heroes. Marvel, Knight, Marvel Knights comics often focus on street-level heroes, characters who operate at the ground level dealing with crime, corruption, and more realistic threats. This contrasts with cosmic or world-ending storylines often associated with mainstream superhero teams. Key characters. Daredevil, Matt Murdock. A blind lawyer with his hand senses, Daredevil is often associated with the Marvel Knights imprint. His stories in this line have delved into darker and more morally ambiguous territory. Punisher, Frank Castle. A vigilante driven by relentless pursuit of justice through lethal means. The Punisher stories in Marvel Knights often explore the moral complexities of his actions. Jessica Jones, a former superhero turned private investigator with a tumultuous past. Jessica Jones is another character who has been featured prominently in Marvel Knight stories. Black Widow, Natasha Romanoff. As a skilled spy and assassin, Black Widow's stories in Marvel Knights have explored the shadowy world of espionage and political intrigue. Moon Knight, Mark Spector, a vigilante with multiple personalities. Moon Knight's psychologically complex character is well suited for the darker themes explored in Marvel Knights. If you've not seen Moon Knight TV show on Disney+, Plus, go check that out. That's a dope show. Um, creative Freedom. One of the hallmarks of Marvel Knights was the creative freedom given to writers and artists. The imprint allowed creators to take risks, experiment with, toy, experiment with storytelling techniques, and explore themes that might not be suitable for mainstream superhero titles. Iconic Runs. The Marvel Knights imprint produced several crit critically acclaimed and iconic runs, including Kevin Smith's Daredevil, Brindle, Ma Brindle, why can I not talk? Brian Michael Bendis, Daredevil, and Aliases, featuring Jessica Jones, and Garth Ennis, The Punisher. Expansion and Legacy. While the initial Marvel Knights imprint was more focused on specific characters, the concept has evolved, and the label has been used for various limited series and one-shots featuring different Marvel characters. Television, television and Film. Some characters associated with Marvel Knights have made their way into television and film adaptations, for example, Jessica Jones had her own Netflix series, also did in Daredevil, and Luke Cage, and Iron Fist, and The Punisher, and Jessica Jones. Daredevil received critical acclaim for his darker tone. Yeah, that show should not have been canceled. I hope Disney Plus brings it back in a good way. In summary, the Marvel Knights imprint is a significant part of the Marvel Comics history, providing a platform for storytelling that explores the darker and more mature aspects of its characters. The imprint has allowed creators to push boundaries and redefine certain characters for a more nuanced and sophisticated audience. So yeah, that is what we have today for you, for the Marvel Knights characters. What do you guys think? Are you guys ready to see the, them on t on TV? Because in a way, we kind of already have with the Defend Defenders TV series. Except Black Widow wasn't a part of that team. Kind of neither was uh neither was uh what's his name. The Punisher, but in a way, we kind of already had the crew, and whatever's happened in Echo, I mean, we already got that. Kingpin's in on, I know, is that show, 
They brought Daredevil back for that show. Daredevil is supposed to have his own show coming at some point. It was, I heard it was supposed to be good, but then they pushed it back again. So I don't know what they're doing at Marvel Entertainment. But yeah, if y'all like what you heard today, y'all know what to do. Share, like, subscribe. Go hit me up at MellowPod22 on X. Go hit me up on twitch.tv slash CJ underscore Mellow22. Y'all know what it is because there's another CJ Mellow on Twitch. So make sure you put the underscore Mellow and then 22 because then you can get the wrong cat. You know what I'm saying? I would drop a lot more on my YouTube. So go hit it. I keep changing it so I can't remember anymore. CJ, I want to say C, just CJ Mellow. M E L L O. Not two L's, not one L. -L. Just remember that. Uh, yeah, you know what I'm saying? If y'all like what you hear, y'all got some critiques, hit me up on any, any of those platforms. I will gladly respond to you negatively, negatively or positive to, positively. Oh my goodness. I haven't slept in like three days, so sorry about this. Um, but yeah, y'all know what it is. Happy New Year to everybody. Hope everybody had a great New Year to start this year off. Um, I'm still on my weight loss journey, so we're doing that right now. It's just little things, little things. Hopefully, I'm trying to change jobs in the future within this year, but we'll see what happens. Again, always and forever, one love, peace.